This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. Okay, I'm just going to jump in here and start my story here. Um, Grew up in the Cincinnati area in 2003. I got married and built a house with my wife in Trenton, Ohio, which is, you know, 40 minutes north of Cincinnati. Uh, it's mostly farmland. Uh, all flat when we built the house. We have we moved in. Uh, nothing ever really happened. 2007, my daughter was born, and, uh, you know, first year or so was great. Then, uh... Yeah, uh, she got, you know, a year, year and a half, she began to talk, uh, stuff like that. Um, we noticed, you know, she had the imaginary friend, of course, and it's like, well, you know, lots of kids have that. You know, she's two and three, and she's talking about Eloise, you know, you know, blaming Eloise for this, uh, extra, you know, snacks for Eloise, what about Eloise for this, you know, wanting to include Eloise in a lot of activities, and we just thought that was normal. Um, well, she had also began talking about, you know, things during the night, uh, she would mention in the morning, uh, that little boy chasing her back to her room again, that boy that wears the blue. And I'd ask her, well, what do you mean the boy that wears the blue? What, what, you know, exp- I'd ask her explain a little bit what's going on. She'd say, oh, I, I left my room and, you know, to get some water and, uh, that boy in the blue would just chase me back to my room. And she said, it's no big deal. I think he just wants to play with us. And I'd say, he just wants to play with us. And she'd yeah, me and Eloise think he just wants to play. Which is like, you know, you feel terrible about it. But, you know, that really, that stuff kind of really creeps me out, you know. So, you know, I've always had a relationship with my daughter where she can tell me anything. I always tell her, you know, you can tell me anything, sweetheart. You know, every time she says... Dad, can I tell you something? I'd say, you can tell me anything. And, you know, I remember back when she's two and three telling me about, you know, things, you know, like that going on and just feeling creeped out. And I remember saying to her, like, at one point, you know, like, you know, don't tell dad stuff like that. You know, it's, it's creeping me out. And then, you know, of course, I immediately told her, no, you know, I don't mean that. You know, you can tell me about anything, you know. So I've always, you know, felt bad about saying that to her that once. So, you know, she's, you know, moved on now. She's, she'll be 10 actually next month. And if you talk to her about it now, she doesn't remember at all. She doesn't remember having an imaginary friend or anything about the boy uh, chasing her to her room, you know, on a nightly basis at one point she'd talk about it. But, you know, now she doesn't, you know, remember at all. Well, in 2011, sorry about that, (laughs) In 2011, my son was born, and uh, now he is five now, and I guess when he was about four, he started talking about uh, seeing some things, maybe, you know, some of the things he would talk about, me and my wife would be like, ooh, what's going on, you know, just certain things he would say, and then uh, I remember one time my wife and my daughter were out you know, shopping, and I was home with my son, and, uh, you know, sports were on, we was watching football, he loves watching football with me, um, we go back, and, you know, during halftime, and I go, let's go back and, you know, fold some laundry up for mommy, and we go back to the bedroom, and I'm folding laundry up, and, uh, he goes across the hall to his room, and I see he's got his game on, he wants to play his game, that's fine, uh, and then he comes running into my room, and he's, he's terrified, and, He's hiding under the blankets and saying, she's in there, she's in there again. And I said, well, what's going on? And he says, you know, she's in there dancing. She won't stop dancing. She's dancing in the corner again. And uh, I say, you know, you know, a split second I'm thinking, you know, you know, why is my daughter in his room? Why is she in there bugging him? She hardly ever goes in there. And then, I, you know, it clicked like, no, she's not even home. She's with my daughter. She's with my wife shopping, rather. So I can't, you know, I'm like, 
who's in there? And he says to me, Louise, she's in there dancing again. And I just, I felt like so like terrified inside, but you can't show that to your children, you know? And I'm like, well, what's she doing, buddy? And he's like, she's just twirling in the corner. You know, he tells me, I'm like, well, you can stay in here with me. Don't worry about it. I'm sure she'll be done soon. Like, I don't know how to handle stuff like that, you know? And it's just like, he says her name's Lu- is Louise. And for him to say that, you know, four years later after my daughter is saying, you know, she, her imaginary friend is Eloise. And I realize Eloise and Louise, that's pretty darn close. It just it really freaks me out, you know? So, you know, he mentioned stuff every once in a while, but not, you know, at the same rate that my daughter was experiencing things. Uh, I hope that doesn't escalate any. Um, also just a a side thing, uh, about, uh, I'd say about three months after that happened with my son, uh, I had a, a garage, uh, service company come service. My garage door wasn't, uh, working properly. So he came up to the, to fix it. And he's out in the garage, you know, fixing it and stuff. And when I came out to see how everything was going and, uh, you know, see how, what the damage was as far as a bill goes, you know, I got to talking to him and he said that uh, he didn't realize, you know, my house was, was in that area and that uh, he had grew up in the area and didn't realize that that was, those homes were back there. And I said, yeah, we built in 2003, you know, they built this. And he goes, oh, yeah, they're, and he starts looking around. He does a little, you know, twirl, and he goes, they're used to, you know, because all I can see when I look out my windows is farmland. All I see is corn, and, you know, I have a couple neighbors, but, you know, there's there's not much in the area. And uh, we're real close to the river, and there's some streams and stuff. And uh, he looks around, and he goes, used to be a cemetery right around here, like almost out of a, you know, a movie or something, a horrible movie. And I said please don't tell me that. And he said, yeah, we used to go looking for arrowheads back here, you know, when we were kids. There used to be a little cemetery around here someplace. So that just freaked me out even more. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, uh, my wife doesn't like to talk about it at all. She always is afraid that, you know, any talking about it was, is going to somehow give it power. And, you know, I don't know. I know it all, you know, it scares the bejesus out of me. Uh, I've always, you know, my stance has been, you know, I don't know if ghosts, you know, are real or if they're not. But I've always felt like I want to be the last person to find out for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry for the long call. Uh, I've always wanted to, you know, share that with people. Uh, the list of people that are I'm willing to share that with you know, in person or it's very short. So it's nice to have an outlet to, uh, talk about stuff like this. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Thanks guys. This has been a grave confession from the grave talks to share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead call toll free 888 ghost 13. That's 888 446 7813